Okay, so we we, uh, we now have our modelling our scene with all of um, our different textures applied. Um, so what we can do now is actually start building up a layer base. Um, so a good place to start is actually to use some of Algorithmic's basic materials that they've already put in here. Um, when you're thinking about creating different layers, what you want to be thinking about is making a layer for each type of material that will be visible. For instance, bits of metal, um, bits of paint, bits of dirt, bits of rust, and so on. Um, so what I tend to like to do is think what's going to be most on the model here and that's probably going to be this is going to be a metal box that's been painted and quite a lot of the paint is chipped away and so on. So let's start by doing the paint. Um, one thing to mention with these if I just um, let's just chuck any old any old one on here. Now with each of these materials these have been created in Substance Designer and in Substance Designer you can basically define any parameter as something you can control and those con controls can then come into Substance Painter. So you'll notice when you pick different materials, see how this has things like tearing and fill mode and stuff like this, but if we pick on something like this copper, you can see we have different parameters that we can control for that. So depending on the material you pick, um, you will get different controls. So you kind of get used to materials that you like. So one I quite like this steel as, as a metal. Um, for paint, you can use things like you actually have a fully painted steel here here as well, by the way. So you can control stuff with this too. So maybe we'll start with that. So this is going to be our base paint, and then we're going to add another metal over the top. Now I want this to be kind of like a a red color to start and later on by the way we're going to make these bars that go across a different material and this too so um, it's not just going to be one kind of even thing all the way through um, so we can set our roughness so if we want to have it a bit more reflective we can or a bit more matte we can that's kind of dependent on what you guys want obviously this is all changeable again later so don't worry too much if you're not if you want to change it later kind of thing. Um, in terms of basic parameters, we have scratches we can add. We have rust as well. We're going to leave those off because we're going to add that stuff later. You'll notice this has a bumpy surface, so this is a really important option that you'll get on every material in that you can change the scale of things. So you want to consider the size of your asset and how that's going to work basically. Um, so we'll just leave that on the base 3 to be fair, it wasn't actually too bad. Um, you can also change the actual height range on this as well if you want to have it a bit more bumpy or a bit less bumpy as well. So those little imperfections you'll get on the paint. Okay, so once you're happy with that, what we can do is apply our metal over the top. So like I said before, oh whoops. Um, select layer 1 here and then we'll drag that in. Um, you don't need to do that by the way, you can just cut, cut this one out like that. So with our steel selected, you can see we've got loads of parameters we can change on that. So I'm going to bring through like a few little bits of rust, a couple of the surface imperfections. So maybe I'll take the height on that down a little, a little bit. It's bringing through the um, paint bump, by the way. That's why you're getting that effect underneath. Uh, so we can change the roughness a little bit. And although this is you know, strictly against PBR, really, because it should be using a real-world value, I'm going to up this slightly just because I can, and I think it'll look a bit nicer. Um, again, you can change the scale as well for all those imperfections that that we added in down here. So look, if I had loads of rust on there, that UV scale would make a big difference. So like I said, it's kind of dependent on um, on your model and the scale you want to have it at. Uh, so another really important feature that I should mention while I have some detail here 
is your size here. Now remember I said before that it doesn't matter what this is set to. Um, you can go up or down without losing any quality. So let's go to 128 and let's go back to 1024. And you can see we maintain that quality unlike you would on an image in Photoshop. Um, so why is this useful? Why would you want to work low down like that? Well the reason is, is once you have tons of layers this can be quite um, intensive for your computer so having that nice and low means you can work on your models nice and quickly and not wait for things to process. So in this case I think working on 1024 is fine so we'll leave it at that. Um, so we're going to put our rust way back down like so. Um, so how are we going to bring through the paint from underneath again? Well, this is probably the most important thing in your layer manager. That is, to get you, um, that is masking. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this layer and we'll go to add black mask. Now you can see that the steel has now completely vanished. And that's because it's using this mask here. And now basically anything that's white will be visible. Anything that's black on the, on the mask will be invisible and grey is in between, so kind of um, translucent. Um, so if we select our steel here and then we'll go to the default hard brush in our brushes, make sure we're set to white and make sure if you left click on your layer, you should have the, on your mask, you should have a red outline around it and now you can paint on this and we can see that steel is coming through. And if we look at the mask, but, and by holding Alt and left clicking, we can see, um, and then we can see where it's white, the material is coming through, and where it's black, the steel is invisible. So if we go back to our mask and say go to in between, when we paint, we are getting half the metal through and half the um, painted layer. So let's just right click and we'll go to clear mask so it goes back to black and we'll try out some of um, substances generators which are what all these textures are for. So if you make sure you're on the mask right click and go to add generator and then click here we can preview the different types of generator you can have. You can have dripping rust, dust, edge blur, speckle, and edge damages and so on. Um, so I think um, Metal Edge Wear is quite a nice one so we'll use that one to start with. And When you click on that you can see what it's done. We can now getting metal through and if we alt and left click on here you can see what the mask actually looks like. So where it's white the metal is coming through, where it's black um, the metal is invisible. So if we click on our Metal Edge Wear generator, you can see in here we've got tons of different settings we can mess around with. So we can increase the grunge amount, we can change the scale of that grunge if we needed to. Bring that down a bit. We can set the smoothness of the edge wear. We can tweak the ambient occlusion. This curvature weight one is quite useful for defining less of it if you want. and just tweak, tweak these up and down until you're kind of happy with what you've got. Oh, and you also have this wear level as well which is again a nice useful setting and a contrast as well for sliding little bits out. Okay so um, let's say we're kind of happy with that mask but we want to make some tweaks of our own. In fact what we'll do is we will just bring that out a little bit so we can paint it Paint it more by hand to get rid of it in this next part of the demo. Um, so what if we wanted to paint onto this mask then? So let's click on Alt and left click on the mask, change this to white and try painting. You'll see how we can't do anything to it. And that's because we've used a generator. So what you might end up with is loads of models from other people that everything kind of looks the same. So how can we tweak that mask to make it more personal to us as artists then? Well, if we click on the add a folder option, select our steel layer and drag that into there 
and then right click and do add black mask you'll see that now our steel again is completely vis invisible if we remove the mask and then add a white one we can see because that's white it's all visible so this basically affects anything in the folder and this is obviously editable by us so we can now come in select like this artistic brush or something similar make sure we're set to black over here a really useful shortcut by the way is to use X to toggle between black and white so very useful and then if we now paint on this in black we can actually start taking out bits that we don't like um, we can use the bracket keys to actually um, uh, to shrink and enlarge the brush as well so you can see by using this you can actually take out and get rid of bits and make this kind of more your own design rather than just a, a generator from substance um, so it's quite good if you add more wear on than you might than you would want so you can paint it out you can actually go the other way as well by the way you can select this and go to invert and then you could put a mask over the top here and um, paint white instead of black kind of thing so yeah you can do that too so it depends whichever way you kind of prefer you prefer working like I said the reason I like doing this is because um, it kind of makes it more your own thing rather than just using uh, a substance substance effect okay so there are loads of generators as well let's just um, stop right there and we'll try adding another one in so this time we'll search for see if there's like a, a mud or something we can use okay we'll try this mortar one then so I didn't I don't need to add that new layer but I did anyway uh, so with mortar all selected we can obviously tweak this up and down um, again we can set the roughness on it we can set the, the colour be a bit darker maybe and again we can add a black mask right click add a generator and there's one here that will is like ground dirt so there you go something like ground dirt now what this what this basically does is we just increase the level it basically adds well basically ground dirt so dirt that might have been picked up from the floor and so on that's another quite useful one then you can see underneath there um, so again we could add something else 